Okay, guys, today we're going to work a little bit with talking about adding fractions that have the same denominator. Our number one concern, though, on this is to make sure that when you get all the way done that you reduce if you can. So we're going to start out with one of these organizers like I have on the screen. And I'm going to start by actually filling in the centerpiece and then I'm going to work my way around. So first of all, in the center, let me just make that pen just a little smaller. We're going to talk about adding fractions. with common denominators. Now remember, the big thing with common denominators is the denominator is the number that's in the bottom of the fraction. And so we're gonna kinda work our way around some of this so we can make sure you have a good understanding of what you're gonna do. So I'm gonna move to one of the sections on my wheel and wherever I start, I'm just gonna work my way around the circle in order. Okay, so first of all, there are kind of a couple pieces that traditionally people look at. So when I talk about traditionally solving there's kind of a couple things that you have to make sure of. First of all, you can't add without common denominators. So if we don't have common denominators, we're going to have to deal with that. Okay, if they aren't the same... Then we're going to have to, we would need to have a plan to change. The last thing, and I guess one of the most important things that's going to be built into every single one of these, oops, is that you're going to need to reduce if you can. Now, they're not going to say solve this and reduce. I mean, they might. They might be nice and say that. But 99% of the time, they're not going to do that. So you need to make sure that you're double-checking that. Okay? Now, as I work my way around in just a minute, I have, oh, I guess about six, seven, eight problems that we're going to look at. Um, some of these sections, like this, are kind of big enough that I could write more than one. So I just want you to kind of be aware of that as I start to work my way around. So I don't care if you go this way or if you go this way, but you're gonna to wanna to start one way and then just keep working away around the circle kind of in that order. Okay, so here is number one. Number one, I'm gonna do one third plus one third. So in this problem, you can tell the denominators are already the same. So that means if the denominator here is 3 and 3, then in your answer, it's got to be 3 as well. And then we need to put the numbers on top together. So I'm going to take the two numbers and add them together. So 1 plus 1 would be 2. So I have 2 thirds. Now, we said the last step you need to do is to check to see if you can reduce. And we talked about how to reduce fractions on Desmos. So I'm going to pull Desmos up just so you can see this. So in here, I would do my 2 over 3. Remember, if it gives you a fraction, you're going to hit that little fraction icon in the blue. And see how this one has exactly the same fraction that ends up there. So that means it can't reduce. So this is going to be my final answer. Now, I can fit a second one in here without a problem. I could have maybe written on it this way, too. Either way is kind of okay. So the other one that I have here is 2 fifths plus 2 fifths. 
So first of all, the bottom numbers are both five. So the bottom number and the, the one I'm gonna make over here has to also be five. Then I'm gonna put these together. So two plus two would be four. So four over five. And then I'm gonna take a second and go back to Desmos and check to see if I can reduce it. So four over five still keeps reducing to four over five. So there's no reducing of that fraction. It's as reduced as it can be. Okay, let's go to our next one. So again, you're gonna keep working your way around the circle. So in my next one, For three, I have four over five plus one over five. So on this, I can see that my denominators are both five. So that's gonna go here. And I'm gonna take these two on the top and add them together. So four plus one is gonna give me five. And five over five goes down to one. So that's gonna end up with a whole number answer of one. Okay, number four. I'm gonna add some negative numbers in here so you can kind of see this, that it works the same way. So in this problem, I can see five is the bottom number, so it's gonna be the bottom number over here. And I'm gonna take the top two numbers and put them together. So four plus negative two. So four plus negative two is gonna be two. So two over five is my final fraction. Now, if I were to put that in Desmos, it's not gonna reduce. Okay, let's go on. Keep moving around your circle now. Let's go on to number five. So number five, I have four over five plus four over five. So I did this one mainly because I want you to see what happens when you get like an improper one at the end. So if I look at this, five is on the bottom. On the top, I'm putting those pieces together. So four plus four is eight, so eight over five. Now, if I put this part into Desmos, it wouldn't reduce. But my issue is the top number is bigger than the bottom one. So I'm gonna have to do what we were doing last week and divide it out. So five goes into eight once with three left over. So if I kind of use that check mark method we we're doing, it's going to be one and three fifths. Now I want to point out something because this is something some students have a hard time with. What if at the beginning these fractions that I had had a whole number with them? So I'm not going to, I guess maybe I'll just call this 5B because I just want you to see it. What if in front of those I had ones? So if I did that, I already know what the fraction part's going to be. So listen, if I have this 2, 1 plus 1 is going to be 2. I know that. I also know that this part right here, I've already added together to get that answer up there. So I know those two fractions together are going to be this, which means that that would be 3 and 3 fifths. Okay, let's go to another one. So my next circle over. I have two more we're gonna look at. So number six. So four over seven plus six over seven. So common denominators are there, so I know it's gotta be seven in the end. And I'm gonna have to take these two and add them together. 
So 4 and 6 I'm going to add together to get 10. So it'll be 10 over 7. Now, if I put 10 over 7 in Desmos, it would give me 10 over 7 back. But because the top number is larger than the bottom, we're going to have to go through and divide it out. Oops, I guess I lost my 7 there. So 7 would go into 10 once and would have 3 left over. So it would be 1 and 3 sevenths. Okay, here's number 7, our last one. 2 over 4 plus 10 over 4. Now, I'm going to tell you right now as I look, there's a high likelihood I'm going to be able to reduce something because all I see are even numbers, and we know 2 will go into every even number. So we'll have to kind of deal with that at the end. So our common denominator is 4, which comes from these two. Then I'm going to add this together. So I'm going to add 2 and 10, which would be 12 over 4, and that would end up just being the whole number of 3. Okay, we'll deal with the subtraction ones tomorrow.